All right, guys, so our next topic here today sticks in the, the DC universe here, but, well, I guess it is kind of connected. It's, it's DCEU related for the most part. I mean, who knows what they're kind of doing now. We don't know if these all these movies are still going to be interconnected. We, we know that for sure, quote unquote, that the Snyderverse is not moving on, which is unfortunate. But as I said in the previous uh, thing here, the characters that have existed within there are moving on. Like, we still have the Ezra Miller Flash movie coming. We still have, you know, Shazam. Shazam 2 is coming. And, like, granted, again, it wasn't Henry Cavill Superman technically in there. Well, actually, I guess technically it was Henry Cavill Superman. Suit they just didn't show his face. But it was the same suit, and uh, the, supposedly it was just a scheduling conflict, and that's why it wasn't there. But either way, that aside, we have some news here. One in relation to actually the... Uh, aforementioned Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller Flash movie, and then I think it was last week news came out that Billy Crudup was, had to step away from the Flash movie. He played Barry Allen's dad, Henry Allen, but he had a scheduling conflict, again, with, uh, but he had to go film the, the morning show, and because this Flash movie has been delayed for, I don't know, five, six years at this point, um, obviously, Something just finally came up and he couldn't do it, but they have announced the replacement for that, and it's going to be Ron Livingston. Of Office Space. Of man. Office Space, indeed, is going to be stepping in to replace Billy Crudup as Henry Allen, so that would be cool. I like Ron Livingston. I, yeah, he's great. Ron, Ron Livingston's great. And on top of that, we also have some casting news that Helen Mirren is going to be playing the villain in Shazam. Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. That's interesting. And then lastly, we have an announcement that the Zatanna movie has tapped the director who previously, or the, the they tapped the screenwriter who was the director on um, Promising Young Woman, which I have not seen that film yet, but I have heard very good things. Actually, I, I do want to see it. And uh, so that actually, I think I uh, made a post that said, like, no pun intended, but this is promising. Promising young, young woman, obviously. I know it was, it, I, I literally didn't mean it in that way, but it was. Just, it's just what the title was called. But I thought it was very promising because I've heard very good things about this movie, and for you know Warner Brothers to go out and actually tap you because know, despite you know the fiasco that the Snyderverse is and DCEU is like Warner Brothers has always been a like a director's studio. That's what they were always known for. They, they just hire good directors and they just let them do their thing. Like that's why Christopher Nolan had such a good relationship with Warner brothers for so long, because that's how Warner brothers operated. They were a very director friendly, director driven, you know, creative driven studio. Like they would hire someone to do a job and they would actually let them do the job. Doesn't seem to have been the case with the DC stuff for whatever reason, but maybe they're getting back in the swing of these things. I mean, they have that good relationship with James Wan still. He made the Aquaman movies, he made all the Conjuring movies for him, etc. But for them to go out and tap a relatively new like screenwriter, because I, I think Promising Young Woman was the biggest thing that uh, she has done, and for her them to tap her to come in and do a Zatanna film, which I'm pretty excited about. I never would have expected them to actually do a solo Zatanna film. Would have much... I'm not necessarily preferred, but I would have imagined her being like a secondary character, maybe in there, maybe pop up in like Constantine or Dark Universe kind of thing, maybe even pop up in a Batman or a Nightwing movie or something. But you could do a lot of cool stuff with her. I love this Tana character. I think she's cool. But the question is, John, Rick, what do you guys think about this stuff? Which which one of these stories here what pops out to you the most? Uh probably the Helen Mirren one. I'm I'm not super familiar with Zatanna. Um, like at all. She's a right. wizard. I was gonna say she looks like a magician or something. Yeah, but, that's what it is. Um, I mean that's that's cool. Uh, you know I like Ron Livingston too, so that's good news on the Flash front. Um, Office Space is probably one of my favorite movies ever, and I think a lot of it's because of Ron Livingston. So, uh, pretty pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, John. What do you think here? Yeah, I mean if I had to just straight up pick which one of these is the biggest news i think helen Mirren is hands down the biggest of these three because just because she is a uh, she's she's another class of actor like she like you've got your your hollywood royalty and she's almost in that high hollywood you know movie 
history royalty there. And so her being involved, I think, instantly brings attention and eyeballs to that movie that would have never even bothered uh, glancing at a Shazam movie. So that's that's a great catch, great pull for DC films um, and just just comic book movies in general. It's it's uh, you know, it was like Anthony Hopkins going to Thor and um, some of the other big draws that Marvel has pulled off over the years. It's um, actually not her I, first uh, comic book film, though, either. She was in Red. She was in Red. Yep, Red she was in two, Red. Which was Warner day. Brothers as well. But Red is correctly. also... Red is a comic book movie in the same way that... I'm trying to think, like, Kick-Ass is a comic book movie. and Like, yes, the or its history... Yes, it did. the story did come from comic books, but it was never a you know, New York Times bestselling comic book. It was never a, you know, it was a great, it was a great book. But if you weren't, if you're not into comics, you, you didn't really know about it. It's not Um, your classic superhero fair. Exactly. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think that's, that's obviously the biggest one. Um, the, the flash switching, you know, roles that, you know, they got it, they got a really good replacement. So I, you know, that, that's, it's just going to be interesting to me, you know, coming off of the Snyder cut, how long it takes them to get flash filmed and out in theaters and whether or not it seems jarring. You now with the Snyder cut have these really emotional scenes between Barry and his father. Um, Mm -hmm. And then you're going to roll into a flash movie where it's a different actor. And will that be jarring at all? I I, I feel like it probably won't, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where I'm at. That's... Yeah, I'm with you. I don't know if it'll be I think it'll be just as jarring as probably not even as jarring. But I was going to bring up the Don Cheadle, Terrence Howard swap. It's a little jarring. It's just like, but it happens once the first scene, you're like, wait a minute. And then you forget about it and you move on. Yeah, like, I honestly yeah. forgot that Terrence Howard even had anything to do with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's Don just... Cheadle's like. War Machine. Yeah, he just pops in. When you think of War Machine, you just think of Don Cheadle. Like you don't think it. That's nothing against Terrence Howard. It's just you, Terrence Howard was in Iron Man One, which was twenty odd films ago. <laughs> like, I mean, especially like that's maybe a bad example. We've moved on so far from that whole scene, but I mean, they even make the joke when he comes in. This for Don Cheadle's first scene, he's just like, "Yeah, it's me. Get over it." It's like literally like a wink to the <laughs> audience, like that, yeah. it's a different person. I don't know if they would really do that with Henry Allen, but at the same time, he really has only had that the scene where he's in prison. They didn't I really don't think he's as major of a character. Yeah, as... and a lot of people just more people seem to have watched the Snyder Cut more so than Justice League, so more eyes definitely will probably be on that scene maybe more people would actually notice the swap now especially considering that scene's a little bit more drawn out than there's than it was in justice league so i mean maybe but i don't think it'll be too jarring it's just it's not like uh no more jarring than honestly i'm actually more surprised they didn't end up replacing ezra miller after the whole choking someone and slamming them to the ground fiasco like you know more so than anything they, yeah. they kept him so I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I heard that might have been staged or something too. So like I don't think I don't think the backstory from that was ever really clarified, but I forgot to comment on the Zatanna one. Like I'm I'm a big Zatanna fan. Like Oh yeah, I love Zatanna. Everything everything that Paul Dini used her to perfection in the uh detective comics run that he did years ago, um playing off the fact that she that her father Zatanna, Zatara, Zatara Zatara was trained like Bruce, Batman, Bruce Wayne's magical training came from Zatanna's father. Um, And so Zatanna and Bruce actually knew each other growing up and um, in in a sense because he trained with her father. And so he he used their interplay to great effect in, in the detective comics run he did years ago. And then she's been, you know, she, whenever she's used, she's used just great. I always love the character, whether it's like small appearances on the old Justice League animated cartoon, um, 
to her appearances that uh, her more regular appearances on the young justice cartoon um, that's out. That's currently out. Like, I just love the character. I love the idea of magic. I love the idea that she has to pronounce everything backwards. And so you, it's going to be interesting with them doing a movie to see how much of the, how, how, how they deal with that aspect of her character. They try and find things that are easily like deciphered backwards or do they just lean into it and just like, you'll see something happen and have to figure out what she said on your own. So, right. Well, that's the thing too. And I believe tricky. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they do that for sure. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the young justice series, that's where they had Zatara actually, maybe I'm thinking of a movie. I can't remember, but Zatara ends up becoming Dr. Fate. It was young justice. Was that young justice? Yeah. He, He agrees to take, the helmet he agrees to put on the helmet of Naboo Mm -hmm. um, in order to free one of the, one of the young justice kids, I believe has one of the kids put it on. Yeah. Uh, I I think it may be Wally West puts it on. I can't can't remember exactly. And then in order to free Wally, Zatanna agrees to Zatara agrees to take the role of, because Kent Nelson has died. And mm-hmm. so the doc, the, the helmet of Naboo doesn't have a, um, a, a host. human host. So, yeah, what is just interesting. Cause like, it, again, I, I would have always assumed Zat- Zatanna or Zatara, either one, or maybe both would be introduced as in something else because it's not the biggest, it's not like a super well-known character. Not that it w- wouldn't work. It's just, I just, that because of that, I would have assumed that she'd pop up somewhere else as a side character and something, but it'd be, it's interesting now that Dr. Fate is being, um, that's actually the, we forgot the fourth, the, with the fourth casting news, I guess we'll talk about it now. Freaking, uh, James Bond is James playing Bond. Dr. Fate. Yeah. What's his, uh, Pierce, Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan, Brosnan has been cast as Dr. Fate in the black Adam movie. So we have a Dr. Fate thing happening. I feel like when you cast Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate, I hope they have more plans beyond Black Adam for Dr. Fate. because yeah, it's Dr. a pretty Fate, big choice. Yeah, I mean, it's Dr. Fate's one of my favorite characters, and Pierce Brosnan, despite what you think about his run as Bond, Awful. some movies were better than others. Like GoldenEye. Really? Everybody loves GoldenEye. Everybody loves... Uh, actually, I don't know. Pretty much just GoldenEye. I think the only <laughs> one ever, everybody unanimously loves, and I know nobody likes... Everyone always gives Tomorrow Never Dies shit, but I actually like I like the movie. It's fine. But then the one with was Tomorrow Never Dies the one with Halle Berry, or was that the one with uh, uh whoever Denise else? Richards. Denise Richards. Yeah, there was the Denise Richards and the, the Halle Berry one, and I know one of them. I can't remember. Both of those movies don't have a lot of fans. Let's put it that way. Everyone was like loves Goldeneye. I think is I think everybody also romanticizes Goldeneye because of the Nintendo sixty four game. I don't know if people love the movie or love the game, but yeah, it's a great the game, game. Was popular. It's a great game. I think I think the movie was. I think the movie established it before the game came out. Um, oh yeah, I, I think, think the I think the good. reason I think the reason Goldeneye was so, is so beloved too is because there was kind of a lull in the quality of James Bond's films uh, through the eighties. Like you know, the the ones that did come out weren't. I don't think weren't the best James Bond movies. And I think Goldeneye was a return to kind of that being a, a major um, film draw. But in, in, anyway, I, I love the, I love the Pierce Brosnan ones, but yeah, that was also like people have their, their actors that play certain roles. And he was my James Bond. Like uh, Daniel Craig is obviously tremendous in the role and I love him, but um, you know, J- James Pierce Brosnan was my introduction to James Bond. So he always will be kind of like my James Bond. Yeah, as far as that goes. He played the role. Good. Like it's just, yeah. the, it was just like, the, the, what I would say for it is it, it was the unfortunate time period of just action movies sucked. Yeah. Like, I think it fell victim to that. Like it's what? Like, Late 90s, early 2000s, everything was just going downhill. And it wasn't until like the late 2000s where they stopped making just your stereotypical bad 90s action movies, you know? Yeah, and actually added some substance to it. Fast and Furious being a great example. Like the first like three movies of those 
Maybe maybe the fourth one, too, I can't remember, but they're completely different movies than Fast Five and on. Like, Fast Five is like... Those are like heist movies. Yeah, they're like... And they're great movies. Like, they have nothing to do with the other movies that came before it. Like, they completely switched... Genre. And now, I don't know what the hell they're doing. I think they... I think we made a joke at some point that I wouldn't doubt that the next Fast and Furious movie, they're going to go into outer space or some shit. And I think there's actually rumors that it is happening. That they're gonna be going to outer space, and like I wouldn't doubt it with that. Driving like anymore. a Nissan Skyline on the moon or something. Yeah, like who? I have no idea. Like that franchise, it's like it started out like just like bad '90s kind of stuff. The first movie was pretty much a rip off of Point Break, and then don't even get me started on Tokyo Drift. But then Fast Tokyo Five Drift, and on. God, Tokyo Drift was just like a nightmare. That movie. And I like drifting. And yeah, the drifting's great. But either way, either way, that aside. I'm excited about the Pierce Brosnan and Dr. Fate thing. Dr. Fate's one of my favorite DC characters. So I, I just hope they have plans to do more. And like maybe, and I like Zatanna and, Zatar, uh, Zatanna and Zatara's interactions with Dr. Fate. And if like maybe they'll lean into the DC universe side of magic thing and they actually can do something cool together at some point. I don't know. Just the fact that you're announcing a Zatanna movie and then you get someone of the caliber as Pierce Brosnan kind of makes me think that you would be having more plans but this is also dc we're talking about so i don't think they know what they're gonna do tomorrow so no who I knows so. well this is warner brothers talking about dc is fine this is warner brothers talking about warner brothers leadership with dc properties is very hit and miss anymore so i don't know but i'm looking forward to it regardless you guys have anything else you want to add about any of these i almost completely forgot about the dr fate news no, I think i'm, glad, I'm cool. glad i remember that well it's just it, it's it's again i go back to like it's odd because DC and Warner Brothers haven't announced anything. How long has it been since we taught, had a DC story, you know, that had any kind of real substance to it? It's, I feel like it's been a while. That really? wasn't that since wasn't, fandom. That wasn't Snyder Cut related. Like, what announcements have they made? You know, everything we've talked about for the past two or three months has been Zack Snyder revealing little bits here. You just completely froze up on us, John. John? Your audio actually froze up on us, like not just a whole lot of DC proper news. Oh. And then we get to this Comes week back. after Snyder Cut comes out and people love it. And all of a sudden, DC's like burying the lead. Like mm. they're, they're not talking about that at all. And they're bombarding us with <laughs> casting news, trailers, you know, uh, announcements of new films. Like it's it's been a, a cornucopia of, of DC related content that isn't Snyder Cut related. It's, it's very odd and it's all it's almost comical what they're doing and like as if they're they think fans can't figure out exactly what's going on. So it is a little tinfoil hatty, but there is. It is odd. Your camera froze up on this and your audio cut out for a second there too, just a second ago. I don't know if you had like an internet hiccup or anything, but um, it is interesting if you actually, if you put on your tinfoil hat, it is odd timing. It's like all the Snyder Cut stuff's popping off and then all, all these stories, like you said, there hasn't been DC announcements really since DC fandom. There's been pretty yeah. much nothing. Radio silence. It was yeah. all... Snyderverse or Snyder Cut stuff. That's it. And then once Snyder Cut pops off, and everybody sees it and it pops off. Now they're like, oh, let's announce this. Let's announce this. It is a little, a little coincidental. Tinfoil hat for sure. But I don't blame anybody for wearing that tinfoil hat right now. It no. definitely seems like it could be, you know, a, a diversion of sorts. Like, let's get them talking about something else. Like, let's move on, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I know, yeah. you know, which is a smart thing for them to do, honestly, because if they, in the end, if they really do have no plans on working with Zack Snyder and Zack Snyder has no plans on working on future properties with them, at least as far as uh, the DC stuff goes, the, yeah, changing the conversation actually needs to happen or it's just going to snowball, you know. So it's, I, I get it in all honesty. I but. Yeah, I feel I feel like it was it was poorly executed though. Mm -hmm. Like you could you couldn't even let him have his moment for one week. I mean, it was it was it was. Sh I mean, I don't know. I, I I feel like it's been very very poorly. I I understand that it's their company and they get to do what they want with these characters. Um, but to I, I don't know to open the floodgates that soon and be like, oh hey. Don't look at that thing over there. Look at these shiny things over here. It's it's like okay, right? Oh, all we gotta say is 
Hashtag restore the Snyderverse. There you yeah, go. Right. Tweet it out. All right. But anyways, guys, question is, what do you think about all that? was four DC topics. Obviously, like I said, like we just kind of mentioned, like John brought up, do you think it's kind of odd timing? Do you think it is like, well, let's kind of, let's change the conversation? You think Warner Brothers or any sort of like, I don't know, minutia with that? You think there's you know some behind the scenes like they want to change the, the topic and everything from the Snyder Cut stuff? Like I said, I totally understand them wanting to do that, uh, but it is like I don't know, it's tinfoil hatty, but it's definitely possible. I don't blame anybody for wearing that tinfoil hat. But let us know in the comment section below which one of these four topics you thought uh, which which stood out to you. Let us know down below.